going on friends? Um, today's video is going to be probably more for the longtime followers, loyal to the channel, those who actually care about these kinds of things, but probably something that I haven't done in quite some time, which is provide a life update because um, so much has gone on in 2023, particularly in my life as a doctor, my personal life. And I really wanted to make this video an episode to kind of give you guys an update of what's been going on, my biggest lessons, things that are going well, things that could use some improvement, changes to the channels that are gonna be happening, things about fellowship, careers, life's a cardiologist, and changes to the MD journey that will be happening in 2024. If you are not interested in any of those things, and I will put some chapters or bookmarks down below in the description. If you're not interested in any of those, it doesn't offend me. We'll definitely get back to our original tips and advice videos for the medical journey but i do feel like there's going to be some pearls in here of things that i've learned throughout this past year both good and bad that hopefully you can relay into your 2024 and for those of you guys that have been following me for quite some time since my medical school days hopefully you can kind of see the transformation of my journey especially the channel the youtube channel and so if i'm looking down it is going to be because i just wrote a bunch of notes and so that way i'm just not rifting but there's going to be a lot that we cover so it's probably going to be a long video feel free to come back or just leave if you feel like none of this is pertinent to you at the same time if i have to record in bits because my daughter is waking up. You can see, yeah, let's see if that, you can see her move around already. If she wakes up, then we pause this video and we do it at another time. But we're gonna summarize kind of life going into 2024, what that means for the channel, the MD journey, things that I've learned in fellowship already six months in, and then what I have going on in 2024, including the planned new project that I have in mind. So let's get started with best parts of 2024. Number one, kind of hit on it, I became a parent. I honestly, can't remember life before having my daughter. Well, I kind of do because time was a lot more predictable in terms of what I could have. Now her sleep schedule pretty much dedicates everything that I do and definitely lower on the sleep front than I used to be. Um, and we'll get into that too, which was never that great to begin with. But there's so much from being a parent that I realized that just comes in this concept of purpose. Before, I feel like I was doing things for myself, doing things for you guys, for the content, doing things for my wife and our future. But when you have a baby girl, when you, when you have a kid in any ways and you become a parent, but I think a girl in particular, every time you look at them, there's like, every kind of decision you make, every habit you take on, every habit that you fail to take on is almost kind of a consequence that they face because then they deal with the person that you are because of those choices. So everything that I do is more purpose kind of driven. You're also highlighting how much time you waste doing things like social media or just watching endless amounts of Netflix. And don't get me wrong, I still do some of those things, but it's definitely dwindled as more over time is understandably spent with her. Number two is we bought a home. This is our first home, my wife and I, and we made this almost kind of by accident the quick funny story about this is my wife and I were renting for our one year when I was working as a hospitalist and I found out that I got into fellowship in the same city I was working in we thinking that we were just gonna rent the same place for three years or maybe rent at a different place asked our landlord what the rent is going to be in a few months when our lease was up and number Delta, the change was like astronomical. And I'm like, well, if that's kind of your decision, I'm gonna look for a home. I was working as a hospitalist, I had enough income and we weren't living on very much of my income. And so we had enough saved up for a possible down payment. Now in central Texas, the cost of real estate is really expensive. And in 2023, mortgage prices and real estate and real, you know, interest rates were through the roof. So not the best time to buy. And so my wife and I took a look and probably after two or three showings, we had a great real estate agent and they found the home that we are currently living in now. And and now that's how we have it. And funny enough, the landlord that we had rented the home that we were renting in for the same price that we were paying. So if he had possibly just kept her rent the same because we were good tenants, we probably would have been there for three years and not have this home. And I'll probably make a different video in the future about how I was able to buy a home as a doctor, what the process was, because I use something called a physician loan. And so I know that there's people probably interested in buying a home and maybe you have a bunch of debt to your name because of med school or your income's not high because you're a trainee and kind of how I was able to circumvent that. And so buying a home is definitely one of the highlights of 2024. Number three, I left my first attending job as a hospitalist. This is for those of you guys who haven't watched the channel enough. I finished three years of internal medicine residency and I took my first job as an internal medicine hospitalist. I moved back home close to my wife's parents and this job was really nice because it was one week of work, seven days in a row, seven to seven, and then you had a week off. That's kind of your typical schedule of a hospitalist. I'll link down below if you're interested of my life as a hospitalist in case you're interested in what that even means. But I was making a six-figure salary, good schedule. My wife and I traveled a lot in 2023 and late parts of 2022. And it was nice, uh, but I got into fellowship at the end of 2022. And so I already knew at the start of this year that I was going to be leaving this job. And if anything, it was sweet because I made a good deal of money for the last six months that I worked there. And they made my schedule even nicer because they needed somebody to work both weeks. So my schedule at the end of my hospitalist life was Tuesday to Thursdays, Tuesday to Fridays every week. But then I would have either a three or four day weekend depending on which variation of that I had, which was really nice. It felt like I always had a vacation 
not too long of a work stint in the middle of it and was able to save even more knowing that we were going to have our daughter, we were going to buy this house and going to fellowship where your salary significantly drops. And I'll get into that as well. That gets into number four is I started a cardiology fellowship. I am now in my first of three years of cardiology training to be a cardiologist. I am six months in now and I've made an update video for the past four months, which you guys really enjoyed. And it's been going great, really enjoying the field. There's a lot to learn, which makes me a little nervous, but it's been a great year. I definitely feel like I made the right move. And in a future video, I'll make an update video on my decision to leave medicine to become a cardiologist or internal medicine. Number four is my future. And this is the part that people don't talk to you about enough because maybe there's not enough doctors making this kind of transition is that the future is a lot more clear for me, which is really exciting is that when you're in med school, people ask you what your five to 10 year plan are. Is this are? And honestly, most people don't know. I didn't know. When you're residency, people ask you the same thing and you're probably not sure then too. But when you're in fellowship like I am, you can start to see what kind of cardiologist you want to be based off of the other cardiologists that are practicing with you and training you and saying like, these are the people that I probably want to be like, and I want my career to look like theirs. I want my week to look like theirs. And this is where I want to work based off where my home is. And so these are the institutions and employers I may be working for. So it's kind of fun planning my future and with now my wife, my daughter or dog, our families around us to think about what my career will look like, what my lives will look like in five to 10 years. So it's a lot more concrete, which is really nice. And then finally, this has probably been the best year in terms of business for the MD Journey. The MD Journey is not just a YouTube channel, it's not a blog, you know, we do coaching and we have courses and this is something I've grown over seven years from just a blog based content where I was just writing about my tips and strategies. You guys enjoyed those. I became a YouTube videos, became Instagrams and emails, etc. And the main goal has always been making a majority of what we do free, but to allow team members to join our team and essentially offload me so I can be a clinician, be a fellow and now be a dad. You know, we've had to bring team members and med students and staff members on. And if you guys are interested, I'll link down below our application page if you're ever interested in joining our team. We always are looking for great talents, but it's been the best year. Something that I've never discussed in terms of the channel before is like income. And I don't really get into that because that's not the point of this channel. The side hustle, which started seven years ago, has made six figures in the past few years, stably and steadily increasing. But the biggest change for 2023 is, you know, the income is fine, but I feel like it's probably the year where I've worked the least in terms of the business, where I've been making videos. You guys may have noticed more or less that I was equally present, but in the background of things being created, things being done, like our coaching, I used to do all the coaching back in 2022. And now we have a team of four to five great study coaches who are better than I am, providing excellent value to where our students are doing excellent and getting amazing results. And so growing that and being proud of seeing this team grow with the same mission of helping all of you guys succeed on your journey, but doing it with less stress makes me realize it goes into 2024 that it just doesn't have to be me. So it's nice to kind of see something that started from a blog become what it is today. And there's lots more room for improvement. I'll talk about some of those changes that I'll be making, what that means for the channel, but it's nice to just take a step back and saying, I didn't work that much as I have in the past and we've done, if anything, better. So always a positive sign. So now let's transition to actually talking about updates for the YouTube channel. Overall, a good year for the YouTube channel. If anything, saw more of a plateau in terms of our growth for a few reasons. The one, I posted less predictably than I have in the past where I was very vehemently on a twice weekly basis. But after having my daughter, after buying her house, after having fellowship, it was hard to create a system to get back on that. And with our team to do that on a weekly basis at the quality that I wanted. And number two, and I think every YouTuber and every content creator has this, and I don't know if I consider myself a YouTuber, but when you have 50,000 plus subscribers, there's probably some element of that being true. And you do have some experience of creative burnout because you have to balance what YouTube wants and that's you know, God holy algorithm versus what I want to make a video about or what I think you guys want to hear about. And so this is kind of happy medium. And at the same time, when I make something that I want to make about and then no one watches it and it makes me say, huh, I need to make another, you know, Anki video or whatever it may be. And you have to find that nice balance, making sure that this is something that I constantly want to show up for, which is provide value to you guys, but for the things that I think that I can actually speak on new and differently and inside and make sure it's valuable to you versus just doing it because YouTube is recommending that I make a video about, you know, the 25 study tips that you need to know to get an A tomorrow. So I think I've circumvented that by making more things such as my career. A lot of you guys really enjoy the cardiology updates. And I really enjoy talking about those because that's what I'm going into. And that's what I'm talking about now. So kind of grabbing all that, things that are changing for the channel in 2024. One, we're going to get back to a predictable schedule now that I have a better system of creating content, planning it, and knowing where rotations on my fellowship are going to be busier and probably better opportunities for me to record ahead. For example, in just a few days, I'm going to start my IC rotation. It's not going to be ideal to uh, record videos for YouTube. And so from the past two weeks, I've been just kind of front loading a bunch of creations that you guys will probably see, including this video, a few weeks later, which is fine. And that way you guys get to enjoy the content and I get to focus 
focus on taking care of sick patients in ICU. Number two is you'll be seeing using our team to create more videos. Recently, you may have seen that we have done more animated videos just to give it a shot. And I've really enjoyed the quality of them. And I think you guys will hopefully like them as well. But you may start to see different team members or hear different team members provide the help and content that we're creating. And we can see what the results of that are, but I'm really excited for you guys to hear some of our amazing study coaches and study team members do some of those voiceovers because not only are they have really nice podcast voice, in my opinion, but they also provide really cool tips and advice. Um, this is getting to the part of the channel that's gonna be changing the most is that it needs to get away from Lush, the YouTube creator, to now the mission, which is to help you guys succeed on your medical journey, doing it with less stress. And frankly, I'm not the only one that can do that. And there are people much closer to where you may be on your journey that are part of our team who can make amazing content um, and help us stay on a normal schedule. So really excited to see what our team kind of molds into this. Three, uh, definitely more behind the scenes in my life as a cardiology fellow. Um, there's probably going to be a tons that I'll make over the future. So I'm excited because you guys seem to enjoy those. So keep your questions coming because they definitely stem more video ideas that I have for you guys in the future. And then four, creation with a less focus on the algorithm. You know, it's hard to fully avoid it, but my goal is to think of video creation for you guys and these content ideas and the video ideas is almost like darts. And I, the more darts that I have, if I'm consistent enough, as long as the quality of the dart is good, making the idea is good enough, then a lot of them will hit. And hopefully you guys enjoy them. And some of them mean, and I just have to be okay with that. YouTube may pick up a, a video that I didn't think will do well, but I chose to throw it anyways. And I think that's gonna be the best combination of how to avoid that burnout. Next, I wanna kind of quickly talk about some updates for the MD journey in general. General. One is more of our focus is going to be on content with the use of our team and trying to essentially not be relying on me. And this is more of a business philosophy, but you always think that you are the only person that can do X, Y, Z. I'm the only person that could do YouTube, the only person that could write the blog post, the only person that could write the emails or do the coaching. But in reality, I realize we have an amazing group of students and team members and docs on our team that can do just as good, if not better. And so I'm excited to kind of see what they can do. But the second part of the business, which I'm really excited about, and this is kind of a update in a way is simplifying how we do our business. In the past, every time I felt like something on the medical journey was needed, I usually created a book, um, which we were like three or four in the past seven years. I created a video course on things like how to study, how to do well in your rotations. Essentially just packaged all my lessons into one place for you guys. So pre-med stuff, clinical rotations, step on. Every time I would create it, it would be kind of packaged by itself. And unless you were part of something called our Metalead Academy, you would essentially have to buy each one individually and I would have to promote each one individually or talk about it, or you'd have to find it in a way the programs were highly reviewed you know our level up your setting program i think has like thousands plus students now that have taken it and great results from people who have learned how to study from a to z but from a creator perspective it's kind of annoying when you create something and then you have to think about promoting it again and there's like something else that somebody may have benefited from and so we're going to simplify how we do business and our offerings it's going to essentially come down to three buckets um maybe like three and a half but for the most part we're going to have one bundle of everything where you'll have access to everything that I've created plus everything myself and my team have created going forward in one bundle, likely for one price. Almost 99% sure it'll just be a one-time payment and you have access to everything in the future too. Because I understand people on the medical journey are not in a setting where you just have a tons of money just sitting around. You're a poor medical student if you are anything like me. Number two is we'll have still our group coaching, which we do live group coaching on, there she goes. <laughs> live group coaching on a weekly basis. For one price, we offer lifetime access. You can jump on any of your calls, including with myself, ask any questions you have. Sometimes there's only one or two students on at a time, so it's almost like having a one-on-one -on -one coaching call. Other times there's maybe tons and you get to interact with our community, so it's really fun. And our, all of our coaches, including myself, are doing this on a weekly basis, and so that will still be there. And then lastly, and probably our most impactful and hand-holding program is our one-on-one -on -one studying programs. One bundle of everything, group coaching, and then one-on-one -on -one coaching. No more if I create something else, it'll just kind of be sold to loan. It'll just be included in that bundle or one of those three buckets. And that will help us create things without feeling like it needs to be part of a bigger package or fancy or worrying about like the sales page or things like that. I just want to create stuff for you guys, most of it free. And if I have to do something paid because I feel like that's how much effort our team has to do to put it together, then if it goes behind a paywall, it just behinds the same one. So if you have access to it, you get access to it all the way in the future. And so that's what we're going to call it our med school blueprint. That's the name for now. It may change. It's our entire A to Z guide on how to succeed on your medical journey. So if you're a pre-med, if 
your on your first rotation ever in your clinical rotations, if you are learning how to do biochem as a first year medical student, if you're applying a plan of residency, if you're in residency, and then eventually I'll make content on how to do well in fellowship, it'll all kind of be there, a combination of text and courses. And so if you're interested, it may be live um, as the making of this video because video is two weeks ahead. And so I'll link it down below. If anything, it'll be a wait list and you guys can check those out. Appreciate any of your feedback. Try to make it a very easy yes in terms of this tool can help me on my medical journey. It's not overly expensive. It's constantly being built upon and people are adding content to it. I feel like that's what I would have wanted when I was a medical student myself. And this allows my team to just say, hey, here's a whole of something we don't have, a video that would be great or a workshop that would be amazing. We don't need to sell it individually anymore. We just put it in here and more people benefit. And so over time, it just becomes more and more valuable. Our seven to 10 courses or whatever we may have at this point and programs, it just allows me to just have one bucket of now three things that we can talk about. And if you're interested in any of those, cool. If you're not, totally understand. Enjoy the free content. But that's kind of the biggest thing that would make make it out. Number three is something that I really wanted to do in 2023, but for many reasons, it just didn't happen. But phasing myself out to my zone of genius. When you're in any business of any sorts, it's not a business, it's more of a job. If you're the person doing all of the small things, if there's something that my team member can do that I am doing, then either not trusting them enough or I haven't delegated well enough. And so my job in 2024 is to really identify where I do my best work for you guys, which is creating content. I think I do a pretty good job, correct me if I'm wrong, of sharing my experiences and then giving insights and reflections that hopefully you guys can use on your journey. Strategies that are more than just the typical strategies you may hear on the internet, more advanced, deep dives, etc. And I want to do more of that instead of working on some of the background stuff that we have to do because we're a business. And so using different team members who are have those strengths and can replace me is going to be something that we do. And maybe finding new team members. So again, if you're interested, I'll link down below. I'm in the description that you guys can check that out. Finally, just things to put on pause. Not everything that you do is going to lead to value or not everything you do is should be the thing that you should be doing now. Things that we'll be putting on a pause include things like the podcast, which we've gotten good reviews from, but it's not something that is going to give us the biggest value for now. Maybe we'll come back in the future. Things like sponsorships, uh, associations with companies have things that we've done, obviously because we're a business and a YouTube channel, I feel like that's the thing you do, but it does make almost like a pressure that you have to post a video about studying if you partner with a studying related program or uh, company. Not that we won't do sponsorships in the future, maybe we'll do them sooner than I'm expecting, but I'm not in the rush to sign sponsors for our YouTube channel. Now we get into the fun parts, which is my fellowship update. Again, I've made a separate video my first four months as a fellow, and you guys really seem to enjoy that. I wasn't expecting the attention towards that video that it got, so again, if you're interested, I'll link that down below. That video is now two months behind, as in I have now six months into my cardiology fellowship, and things are still going amazingly well. Like I mentioned, I'm going to start ICU in just a few days, which I'm really nervous about because I never enjoyed critical care that much in residency. There's always like this fine line of tension where you feel like people can just crash and crump at any moment. And you have to go to the situation where things are not going well. You have to make decisions pretty quickly. And I really enjoy just like being thoughtful in medicine and taking my time to take all the data in and figure out what to do with my patients. And you don't always have that luxury in critical care. So it's going to be a challenging month for me, but that's okay. Um, I'm excited. The second part is what we talked about a little bit is career-wise, I've kind of learned what I want to do and kind of confirmed that in my six months is that I want to be a non-invasive cardiologist. What that means is it's easier to understand what the opposite is. An interventional cardiologist is somebody who does procedures. Typically that means your cardiologists are in the cath lab, putting in stents, putting in devices. You know, if somebody comes in with a heart attack and they have a blockage and they need that opened up or cleaned up or they need a stent, then that is an invasive cardiologist. If somebody needs a pacemaker or if they need an ablation for an arrhythmia that they may have, that goes to an electrophysiology doctor. I don't want to do that. One, they require extra training and and two, the procedures themselves are not what makes cardiology interesting to me. Not where I enjoy interacting with patients, kind of treating them, um, doing consults, seeing patients at clinics, reading images. And so I'm excited for a future where I'll have a combination of days where I read echoes, days where I read stress tests, days where I read CTs, days where I see patients in clinic. And then depending on how my future group may be kind of situated, maybe I'll do some weeks of consults where I work with trainees, residents, etc. And then the other part of cardiology is you always have to ask yourself, or do you want to focus on a specific area. And so there's areas like sports cardiology that people don't talk about, areas such as prevention or preventative cardiology, or areas such as like working with patients with HOCAM, which is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, diseases that I always found cool when I was learning about them, but over the next year and a half, it'd be nice to dive deep into and saying like, I would love to have a collection of patients that people send me because I enjoyed dealing with these pathologies. People may not feel comfortable and now I get to see those patients as a future clinician. So that's kind of where my career is going. So I'm really excited about that. Next part in terms of finances, my amount of moonlighting will increase. If you're not familiar, 
Moonlighting basically means if you're a trainee, so if you're a resident or a fellow, you're essentially working shifts doing something that you have board access to, right? So I am board certified as an internal medicine physician. I worked as a hospitalist, so I can take shifts from a former employer or anything else, anyone else who may have offer a shift in terms of working as a hospitalist or anything medicine related that my board certification allows me to. When I was a resident, I moonlighted often in the ICUs because I was doing it there as a resident and then they needed extra people to cover shifts and so I would do those and it would pay well. And so now as a fellow, I'm able to take some shifts. For me, it's just my former employer, but I could do it anywhere and that will be nice because just a form of reference. As a fellow right now, each of my paychecks, after insurance, 401k matches, taxes, social security, all that, is about to 2.1k. So about four ish plus k a month which when you bought a new house have a new child your expenses if anything are higher is not the easiest to maintain budget wise we can definitely make it work but it's tight and so moonlighting will help off load that because in one shift as a moonlighter as an internal medicine hospitalist i can essentially make a thousand dollars so if i take a few of those shifts you can start to see the picture i can essentially quickly replace my fellowship salary and overload how much room we have in that buffer that budget so my goal is is that in lighter rotations i'll probably take on anywhere from four to five moonlighting shifts on the weekends usually and then on busier rotations probably just one to two each month and that will be a goal for the next two and a half years next is this focus on improving how i study and balance it's still something that i found to be really hard there's so much to learn in cardiology and i'm always finding it to be a struggle of balancing being a dad creating content waking up in the morning early enough to work out and still have time to study then show up to work try to study in small bits of times that you get there and so still coming up with a great system where i can feel like every single day this is what i'm going to do to learn cardiology move the needle forward to pass my boards which you have to take in three years but just be a better cardiologist and so i need to improve on that but overall really happy with my decision to shift final aspect now is looking more into the location of where i want to work and making it clear to the people in my fellowship and just cardiologists in general in the area that i'm living in saying that like hey like i'll be looking for a job in two and a half years uh, if you need somebody just keep me in mind and so that's something that i've kind of already started going because we just bought a house so i don't want to be moving anywhere i'd like to stay close to where i'm living the last kind of part of this reflection and update are just kind of lessons that I've learned and I'll kind of rift on these pretty quickly. Number one is simple is best. And I've learned that overcomplicating things, especially when you get busy as a dad and as a fellow, the most simplest version is usually the best one, at least it gets things done. Number two is discipline over motivation. I had a student ask me on a coaching call once of all of the fancy ways he can stay motivated to study. And ultimately what I told him is like, look, man, you're asking for the short term benefit of how to stay motivated, but what you really need to be asking is how do I develop the long-term asset of being disciplined? And that is sometimes you just show up for things even though you don't feel motivated to do so. You have to build that discipline muscle by creating little hacks to be more motivated by having like rewards, for example, or taking more breaks, that's fine. But discipline is a muscle, you know, like I went to go run after a 28 hour shift where I got some sleep and I needed to get that run in to train for the half marathon that I have coming up in a few months. I didn't want to but I did because that's more of a discipline than being motivated to do so. Next is something that I have to be very honest with myself and that's monitoring my ego and my ego levels and conversations. And essentially this concept of snapping. I've experienced this with family members, um, interactions with my wife, interactions with clinicians, interactions with staff members of the hospital. I'm by no means a mean person. Sometimes I may say something with the intention of just saying what I meant versus the tone that it came out with. And I know sometimes I'll have a conversation with my wife, for example, and reflect I'm saying, there's a better way to say that or have a conversation with somebody at the hospital and saying like I didn't need to be snappy even though my intention was ever to be mean I could clearly see how that tone could come off across that and you have to be careful with that and so a lesson of how to just take a second think about how you're going to say things and what the perception is and stopping your ego at the door before talking. Final ones are future potential um, all come behind a consistent action. I was thinking about this when I was running one day and realizing that the more you do the right things consistently, you are closer to a version of yourself that's kind of just waiting to grab on and saying like, welcome. I think about that a lot. Is that there's a version of myself that is like so far ahead of where I am right now that it's just waiting to be said, like, keep going, like, make those right moves, and you'll get here. Every time you kind of deter away from that due to procrastination or laziness or lack of discipline, 
then you kind of get away from that person. And so if you're excited to meet that version of yourself that you're excited to be one day, it requires that consistency. Next is this idea of risk of plateaus. You have to be very incentivized to constantly be working for more and pushing to be better. It's completely normal and expected to find periods of your life where you find to the status quo to be okay. I've definitely been that where months go by and like, what has changed in my life for the better? And you realize not much as a fellow, as a dad, as a husband, like those things could have improved more. My physical fitness. And so when you see those plateaus, it should be a, a light bulb moment of saying, I need, I need to make some improvements now. Finally is really just, and this is big for me, is minimizing burning the candle at both sides. Um, I've had streaks where I've woken up um, after only three and a half to five hours of sleep. And not all of that is from just my daughter waking up. Some of it is from her waking up and me having the option of going back to bed, but instead saying, I need to do X, Y, and Z on my task list and only getting that much sleep. And that's not sustainable. Finally, in closing off the video, just the goals for me for 2024. And hopefully I can watch this in a year. You guys keep me accountable. Number one is most important is being more intentional as both a father and a husband. Um, these are relationships that mean the most to me. And thus there can be no status quo. There can be no plateau. I always need to ask myself how it can be a better version of both of these roles for both my daughter and my wife. Number two, is is to really be the fittest that I've ever been. This is a year where I knew I was fit. I ran a marathon at the end of 2022 and beat my personal record by like 27 minutes and did less of that this year because of all the life updates that happened. And I'm still physically fit where I can like run 10, 11 miles without much training and do fine. But I wanna be faster. I want to have my weight honestly be lower where I feel lighter on my feet. I wanna be stronger. But now having a gym in my garage is really nice. And so goal is to run a half marathon, which I already have signed up in February. And then one marathon at the end of 2024 to just force myself to train and really push myself. Number three is to simplify how I run the MD journey and increasing our impact, our simplicity. And the med school blueprint is going to be a big aspect of that. Again, I'll link that down below, uh, whether it's out or it's just for a wait list. Next is to perfect two skills. And perfect is not the right word. To take on two skills in the form of coaching. Both those skills are piano and singing. I do a lot of singing at our temple or at our church. A lot of it has been YouTube and free resources, but I hear enough about the impact of having a coach. I might as well go ahead and have somebody who can teach me the foundations and help me pick up on the aspects of both singing and playing things like the harmonium or the keyboard that I would love to do, um, but do it more in a refined traditional way. Next is something we talked about, which is to have a system on how I want to grow into cardiology, how I want to learn and educate myself. And then finally is this personal project, which the name may change. Actually, it was something that I wanted to do in 2023. And I am a little sad that I didn't do it, but also happy that I didn't do it because the, the year would have just been so hectic. I wanted to do it mainly because I feel like I would have been much further ahead in it. But the end of 2022, I wanted to start something outside the MD journey without the concept of necessarily being a business, but just the ability to create content on some of the principles that we talked about, which is being a better version of yourself. And essentially I called it in my head, the Beyond Average Project. And whether it's gonna be a YouTube channel or just emails or podcasts, etc., don't know. But in 2024, I will have a version of this project, whatever the name may be, that is 100% going to be focused on asking yourself what your personal level of average is and what small things you can do to improve on the things that you care about. You may be at a level that you consider to be the average version of a husband, a significant other, a child, a sibling, care provider, and then asking yourself, how do I become a better version of that? You know, I'm an average runner. How do I become a better runner? I am an average content creator. How do I become better at that? And so the entire platform is going to be based off that. So if you guys are interested, I will link down below in the description of a wait list or something to join our emails. It'll be more refined. The commitment to doing it now that I'm making this video and announcing it is pretty exciting. I'm excited to see creating something from scratch all over again but using everything that I learned through the MD journey of doing it for the past seven years. The MD journey is not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere from it, but having this project that can focus on outside of medicine that is 100% focused on just being a better version of yourself through experiments, through books, through lessons that I've learned. I'm excited to share those. Obviously, friends, this was a long episode. Um, so appreciate any of you guys who stuck around. Um, if no one's around, then I'll watch this myself uh, next year. But there's a lot to unpack, uh, lots of goods. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. Hopefully there's some value Value that you could take for your own future into 2024. But most importantly, I appreciate all the support, all the questions. I hope I really continue to be dedicated to helping you on your journey the same way I was when I wrote that first blog post. This video is more of a commitment to doing the same. I'm going to 2024, a commitment for myself to be a better version, to be there in terms of supporting you guys, for our team to do the same. So as always, my friends, thank you for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on yours in 2023. Happy New Year's and I'll see you in the new year. Peace.